गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू गनर शॉर्ट गनर शॉर्ट में आप सबका स्वागत है जय हिंद वणकम और प्रणाम आज हम बात करेंगे सोमालियन पायरेसी मैरिटाइम सिक्योरिटी खास करके अरेबियन सी और रेड सी के इलाके में और वहां हमारा इंडियन नेवी क्या कर रहा है और इसके बारे में बात करने के लिए हमारे साथ हैं एम्बेसडर गुरजीत सिंह साहब सर गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम जय हिंद गुड इवनिंग जय हिंद सर तो मैं सबसे सबसे पहले सबको बताना चाहता हूँ इससे पहले कि मैं शुरू करूं ये आइडिया मेरे को कहा से आया ये एम्बेसडर साहब ने एक आर्टिकल लिखा ट्रिब्यून के अंदर चार पांच दिन पहले दैट सोमालियन पायरेसी इम्पेरल्स मैरिटाइम सिक्योरिटी आप भी पढ़िए इस आर्टिकल को जब आप इस आर्टिकल को पढ़ेंगे तो आपको पता चलेगा कि इसका क्या यू नो फाइनल डिटेल्स हैं अगर हम ये नहीं समझेंगे तो इस इलाके में जो हो रहा है हम सिर्फ गाजा और इसराइल और रेडसी और यू नो होती के बारे में सोचेंगे क्योंकि ये एक नया बीमारी शुरू हो गया है इस इलाके में और मैं ज्यादा बात नहीं करूंगा इतना ही बता दिया इस बीमारी क्या है कैसे यहाँ शुरू हुआ है इसका जड़ जो है दस पंद्रह साल पहले चलता है ये सब के बारे में आ, हमारा एम्बेसडर साहब बोलेंगे सर ऑल लॉस आप बात कीजिए किस भाषा में बात करना चाहते हो आप बात कर सकते हो थैंक यू जनरल शंकर ऑलवेज अजर टू बी ऑन गनर शॉर्ट एंड थैंक यू फॉर इन्वाइटिंग मी टू स्पीक ऑन अरलीरिक टॉपिक विच इज सोमाली सर so first i think we need to pay kudos to the indian navy they have performed admirably in the last few months in dealing with piracy in the gulf of aden now this is different from the attacks on civilian shipping in the red sea which is coming from the houthi rebels of yemen now i want to draw this distinction there is the suez canal from where ships come into the red sea where houthi yemeni rebels are attacking shipping with the main purpose of attacking israeli and western interests in this you see the red sea next to saudi arabia yes. and yemen next to eritrea the red sea actually leads to the suez canal so they are attacking shipping there and making it difficult for ships to go to the suez canal now if you come south you see djibouti and then after djibouti you come into the gulf of aden and you see that big horn of africa jutting out that is somalia so the gulf of aden is where somali based piracy was rampant earlier was then controlled and is reemerging now and this is where indian navy has taken action <coughs> now the importance of the gulf of aden is if you see it goes into the arabian sea which is the neighboring sea to india and then it also comes into the indian ocean now once you threaten the shipping in the red sea and make it difficult to use the suez canal ships coming from the east and from india avoid that area and start going south to the indian ocean to go around the cape of good hope but here is where somalia is there if you see where you got this anti piracy action sign that is where somalia is it is on gulf of aden on one side and the indian ocean on the other and they can disrupt the alternate shipping route as well now the pirates of somalia do not have a geo strategic or geo political objective they are simply looters sea looters piracy they are looking at attacking ships and collecting ransom 
at this moment there have been about 25 attacks since in january on mainly small fishing trawlers and dhows because the somali pirates have got small dinghies and uh, skiffs what are called skiffs outboard motor small boat by which they can move fast and board these small boats but you don't get big ransom out of them <clears throat> because these are small traders the big ransom comes from threatening big ships so the biggest attack was on <clears throat> the mv abdullah 25 seafarers all bangladeshis bangladesh flag vessel carrying coal that was boarded by several somali ships in the indian ocean side and that is the one that indian navy freed and then the second one was on the mv ruin a bulgarian ruin, yeah. flag and that again the indian navy freed but while freeing the ruin r-u-e-n the mv ruin there was an altercation <coughs> between the indian navy and these pirates <coughs> the pirates like to take on a big ship <coughs> and take it to deeper waters and use it as a mother ship. so then their dinghies are offloaded from the mother ship and then they go ahead and attack other big ships in the deep sea not on the coast so attacking a big ship has two objectives one use it as a mothership second get a bigger ransom now <clears throat> when the mv ruin was being freed an indian navy drone was shot at by the pirates and they also shot at the indian ship so finally i think a contingent of uh, marcos commandos was airdropped to a c-17 uh, galaxy i think this was a very good exercise and they managed to take over the cover the ship overawed the pirates and i think arrested 35 and are bringing them to india <clears throat> now this is a significant departure from the past between 2007 and about 2012 was the peak of piracy in this region <clears throat> and there were about 20 different navies operating in tandem trying to control this piracy in which india also participated in a very big way the chinese navy also came to participate in these anti-piracy operations and they use this occasion to test their supply lines. And after this operation, they decided to stay in the region and hence opened a naval base in Djibouti, which already had a French base, an American base, and a Japanese surveillance base. So Djibouti has rented out its territory to four powers not all on the same page but in that period when navies caught pirates they did not know what to do with them because domestically you could not do anything and what they would do was basically puncture their dinghy and then let it go let them be on their own after disarming them but the EU paid Kenya and Seychelles to set up uh, trial courts against piracy under international law. But most countries were reluctant to host this because Somali terrorists could mount attacks on me to free these people. Now, India is bringing 35 pirates back. Now, this is interesting that now our approach is different. Earlier, we only sent them to the Seychelles. This time, we are bringing them back because of two things. First, since 2022, India has 
a maritime security law which allows you to domestically proceed against acts of piracy against Indian interests. So these pirates which are being brought back will be handed over to Indian police. A case will be registered. Secondly, these pirates had fired at an Indian naval ship. So this is an attack on an Indian asset. So this gives you more reason to try them in Indian courts. I think India is showing not only bravery and courage in dealing with them in the high seas, but also willing to take logical legal action against them. So one question I have here, uh, if I, uh, is there any other country in this vicinity who's enacted such a maritime law by which these pirates can be, uh, you know, prosecuted in their lands? You see, there is a thing called the Djibouti Code of Conduct, which I think around 2014 or so was amended called the Jeddah Amendment. Now, following the Jeddah Amendment, I think there are about 16 countries who are members. India as an observer has joined as an observer. All these countries are theoretically supposed to proceed against piracy. But each one has to have their own domestic legislature. Now, I'm not aware how many have done it. Yeah, okay. That is all. Now, why is Indian Navy in the forefront. You see, since 2018, there were no known acts of piracy around, around Somalia. So there was a UN Security Council resolution empowering foreign navies to act in Somali waters to act against piracy. So because since 2018, there were no acts of piracy in December 2022, that authorization lapsed and was not renewed. So currently, there is no authorization for foreign navies to enter Somali waters and act against pirates, except with Somali approval. Now, the Somali government, which is trying to establish authority, actually prefers that its coast guard be strengthened. Now, the Somali Coast Guard has 750 people who are trained by EU and others, but has only four boats, out of which I believe only one is functional. So that Coast Guard is not really functional for the purposes of dealing with pirates. Now, I think here I would like to mention two points why piracy has rekindled in this region. The first one is that since the Houthi action in the Gulf of, in the Red Sea, many ships which used to patrol around Somalia have actually shifted, the, particularly American and EU ships, to protect shipping in the Gulf, in the Red Sea. They have left the patrolling areas of the Gulf of Aden vacant, which allows the pirates to come back because there's no policing. The second part, now, this is interesting and I'll explain it in detail later. Somalia was essentially supported by AMISOM, the African Union mission in Somalia, backed by the UN, which helped Somali government fight against first the Islamic courts and then their splinter group, Al-Shabaab. Now, Al-Shabaab is on the run, but it has elements which are armed. So they are like, you know, in the movie 47 Ronin, I mean, headless samurai, armed, but no leadership. So they, I don't think that they are friendly to the Houthis, but they see the Houthis as inspiration and therefore are undertaking acts of piracy because they have the weapons and they can acquire the boats and move to the sea and start looting people or asking for ransom. Now, though the United Nations mission in Somalia is now in transition and it's called, I think, ATMIS, you know, African Union Transition Mission in 
Somalia, they are helping to build the capacity of the Somali government, but not undertaking military operations. Due to which, there is more political activity in Mogadishu. Now, here I need to explain that, let me go back. In 1960, Somalia became independent. Now, when it became independent, it was actually the Italian trust territory. It was the trusteeship territory given to Italy by the United Nations to run because Somalia had been an Italian colony. Now, in 1925, Italian Somaliland had acquired Jubaland, which is near Kenya. Jubaland was part of the British East African Protectorate. But due to clan affinities, Juba land was handed over to Italian Somaliland. So if you go real south near Kenya, that is where Juba land is. You can't see, it's not marked on the map, but it is there. So that was handed over to Somalia and became part of the yeah, here you can see Jubaland, right in the south. So that became joined up with Italian Somaliland 1925. So when Somalia becomes independent in 1960, Italian Somaliland plus Jubaland become a new country. Now, if you look up north, next to Djibouti is Somaliland. Somaliland was a British protectorate. They took their own decision and said, we would also join the new Somalia. So within a few days of independence, and I think Somaliland had five days of independence from Britain, then they joined Somalia. And then you see Puntland. Puntland was not independent. It was a part of Italian Somaliland. But due to clan holdings, they always had a certain amount of autonomy. And what you see as SSC is again, clan-based autonomy. But Jubaland, SSC, Puntland, beyond autonomy, they never sought independence from Somalia. Whereas Somaliland does, I'll come back to this. Now, each of these, I, let's call them regions, that I am discussing, have got their own elected governments, different from Mogadishu, owing loose allegiance to Mogadishu. All of them are pumped with capacity building money by the European Union and other Western partners to build governance. One of the governance structures which was built was their post guard. In the case of Puntland, it was called the PMPF, the Puntland Marine Police Force. I can tell you that all these marine police or coast guards in all these regions actually are very efficient. And they were strengthened when piracy was being controlled. So they became the ultimate arbiter of controlling piracy in the later stages of piracy, anti-piracy operations. Now there is no piracy since 2018. But what you have are very efficient Coast Guard or police forces who have started becoming players in the domestic politics of these regions because they are armed and efficient. Typical developing country syndrome. In Pakistan, we understand it. The army plays the role because it is armed and an efficient institution. So these forces which were trained to guard the coast have now become players, particularly in Puntland, and spend most of their time meddling in politics and not looking out to the sea where they think nothing is happening. Now, if you look at Puntland, it is actually the tip of the horn of Africa. And that is where much of the piracy trouble is coming earlier and now. Because... The ships have gone, other navies have gone. Puntland's marine police force too involved in domestic issues. 
and Parisi raises his head. Why Puntland? Let me give you some figures. You know, in the case of, uh, if you look at the populations, Somalia as a whole has 25 million people. Somali land has about 5.7 million, Puntland 4.3 million, Juba land 1.3 million. But while Somali GDP PPP per capita was 2000 and Somali land 852, Puntland's GDP per capita is only 372. It is among the poorest parts of Somalia. It has a problem of poverty, instability, and the vexed problem of unemployment. As I told you, Puntland has 4.3 million people. It's almost 20% of Somalia's population, but very high unemployment because it is very bad terrain. So the people were trained in doing fishing. So this is what you call the blue economy. So Somalia in general, Puntland in particular, can thrive on a blue economy. Now what happens is that there is an immense amount of foreign trawlers, mainly Chinese, which come to that region and put the local fishermen out of business. As a result, you have fishermen who have boats. Now they have weapons. Now they have no navies there. And they have these trawlers who are de denying them rights to fish in their own waters. Now what do they do? They return to piracy to attack those same trawlers and capture them. This is the nexus which is happening. Now, once they get that trawler, then they try and use it to go for a bigger ship. Because these trawlers are small. They, they can only loot them, not much ransom comes. But you must understand that piracy is a business. Already due to piracy, the number of armed guards on civilian shipping in the Gulf of Aden has massively gone up. Now, armed guards are useless in the Red Sea when the Houthis are attacking you with drones and missiles. But they are effective against pirates. So, armed guards are back in fashion, raising the cost of shipping. Insurance costs have gone up. So, insurance companies, companies which provide armed guards are all making good business. They did big business in the 2007 to 12 period and they are making big business again now. What is worse is that they are actual money lenders or piracy financiers. Some of them are on record in news reports. They are funding these people. Go and capture that trawler. Let us take away their fishing catch. We will sell the fish and make money. Now this is small time piracy. And then they pay off these pirates here. Take some money. I'm selling this fish. Next, they will capture the coal on a ship. Next, they'll capture gas on a ship. So these pirates are being financed to go out and capture ships and run a parallel economy of Somalia. The International Maritime Bureau says that in the heyday of piracy, in those five years, seven to eight billion dollars was the cost to the global economy per annum seven to eight billion dollars per annum which included ransom payments now nobody wants to say i paid a ransom but if you in those days saw how many new banks came up in Djibouti and how they were flourishing the only answer was that this was perhaps ransom money being parked there. You see the amount of property ownership in Kenya by Somalis. When I was, I was in Kenya 10 days ago, they say all these areas taken over by Somalis. Where did they get the money from? And these are not Kenyan Somalis. These are Somali Somalis. 
So the recycling of ransom money, money laundering it into the economy has made Somali life better. Now, on one hand, you have instability in Somalia. On the other hand, there are grandiose dreams of Somalia. You know, the Somali flag is a light blue and it has a five-pronged star. This is not the star of David. It is the star of the full Somalia. Each star, the each corner of the star represents one area where Somali people live, which Somalia wants to reunite. One star, one segment represents Italian Somaliland. Another represents British Somaliland. They are theoretically one. Then there's Djibouti as another prong. There is the Somali region of Kenya, it's called the Northeast Province, I think. And then there's the Somali region of Ethiopia. Now, Djibouti was the French Somaliland, where the British Somaliland, Italian Somaliland, Djibouti was French Somaliland. The main clans there were slightly different, the Afar and the Isas. Here, Djibouti. And Djibouti borders Eritrea and Ethiopia, where the Afars also live in Ethiopia. Afar, there is the Afar province in Ethiopia. But Ethiopia has the Somali province, which is here, it's called Ogaden, Ogaden, which juts out here in this, uh, into the horn. So in 1977, I think, when Djibouti became independent under the name Djibouti, Syed Bar, who was the military ruler for 30 years in Somalia, actually tried to take over Ogaden in Ethiopia because there was a weakening military government run by the dearth of Menjis II in, in Ethiopia. The Somalia was backed by the western parts. The dearth was backed by Russia. It was a massive battle for several years, but they could not take over Ogaden. And tensions with Kenya over the northeastern province remain. So from that time, <clears throat> when Somalia thought they'll unite all the five prongs, today they are hard pressed to retain what they have. And this contributes to instability and consequently piracy. Now, Jubaland is right next to Kenya. And I told you that till 25, it was part of the East African protectorate, which included Kenya. So Kenya has a lot of <coughs> links with Jubaland. <clears throat> Jubaland also had has an important port. I think it's called Kismayo, which also was a hotbed of uh, piracy in 2005 onwards. But when the Islamic courts took over Somalia, Ethiopia intervened. And then the Ethiopian intervention led to the establishment of a transitional federal government of Somalia, which was then backed by the UN and African Union under AMISOM. And this AMISOM mainly had Ethiopian and Kenyan troops, some from Uganda and Burundi, but mainly Kenyan and Ethiopian troops. The Kenyans cleaned up the entire Somali land, Pond land up to Bogadishu. The Kenyans cleaned up Jubaland and they took over Kismayu, shutting down piracy from Kismayu. Kismayu now a flourishing port. So now let's come to Somaliland. Somaliland believes, unlike Jubaland or Puntland, that it should be independent. They actually seek independence. They maintain relations with foreign countries. They have an independent relationship with Ethiopia and Taiwan. Taiwan, not China. Yeah, I understood, sir. Very interesting. That is where Somaliland comes in. The yeah. British have been backing Somaliland ever since I was in Ethiopia, trying to get it recognition. Now, the latest 
is that Ethiopia, whose 95 percent dependence on a port is Djibouti, today thinks it should have its own port. Therefore, they have signed an agreement with Somaliland that the port of, I think, uh, Bosaso, is it? Somewhere in Somaliland, uh, Somaliland port, Ethiopia will invest in. And in return, Somaliland will give Ethiopia a naval base. Ethiopia has no navy right now, landlocked country. Will give them a naval base, land for naval base. Like Djibouti has given land to other countries, Somaliland tells Ethiopia, I will give you land. And in return, Ethiopia promises recognition, diplomatic recognition to Somaliland as an independent country. Now, this has really ruined the relationship between Mogadishu and Addis Ababa. Now, here I must tell you of the new dynamics in the Horn of Africa. They have a regional community called Intergovernmental Authority on Development, EGAD, which is in Djibouti, which is brings all these countries together. Somalia, Kenya, Ethiopia, Djibouti, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, everybody is in it, Uganda. Traditionally, the Kenyans and Ethiopians were aligned with Djibouti and they ran this organization and the politics of the region. But now, Ethiopia has broken with Kenya, linked up with Sudan, trying to dump Djibouti, linked up with Somaliland, and trying to set up a new coalition. This has annoyed Somalia and Djibouti. Somalia, this territory is affected. Djibouti, because its lifeline, the port will be impacted if Ethiopia stops using it or curtails the use. So already the UAE, Qatar and Saudi Arabia are very active in this region as a fallout of the Yemen crisis. They are quarreling with each other and finding allies. Now, what has happened is that Turkey has stepped in. And once Ethiopia signed up with Somalia, annoying Djibouti and what is Somali land and it's annoying Djibouti and Somalia. Turkey has signed defense agreement with Djibouti and Somalia saying I will fix the Ethiopians. So this area is very messy. So though there is a lot of feeling that you know stability is returning, Amisom can go out, the geopolitics is very messy. Ethiopia is part of the problem rather than the solution now. And with the problems in the Red Sea, the lack of international policing around the Gulf of Aden, all this is contributing to instability, lack of governance, and consequent rise in piracy. Now, I think there are one or two related things which I could try to explain. The current wave of piracy is once again seemingly brewing from Puntland. Unlike Somaliland, Puntland is less economically endowed and organized, and therefore its youth feel threatened in terms of economic opportunities. The lack of proper fishing fleets and intrusion by many countries' fishing trawlers, including Chinese, deplete fishing stocks from traditional fishing grounds. This Unregulated and illegal fishing prevents local employment efforts in the blue economy. The piracy legacy with arms coming in from the now subdued Al Shabaab perhaps means the remnants are acting on their own. A word about the Djibouti Code of Conduct and its Jeddah Amendment to which India is an adherent. This provides regional navies the locus for action against piracy. It has been instrumental in repressing piracy and armed robbery against ships in the Western Indian Ocean and the Gulf of Aden, and its scope significantly broadened to cover other illicit maritime activities, including human trafficking and illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing. 
So I think these are very important uh, points. But the IMF and the World Bank have recently approved the completion point for Somalia under the heavily indebted poor countries initiative. This provides total debt relief to Somalia of $4.5 billion. Now, it's Somalia's external debt decreased by 64% of GDP in 2018 to less than 6% of GDP by December 2023. Sir, this is a huge decrease. This debt relief will facilitate access to critical additional financial resources that will help Somalia strengthen its economy, reduce poverty, and promote job creation. Now, the problem is that while the world is taking such positive action, piracy is coming up, which is totally contrary to all these efforts. The post amisom governance, the post HIPC financial relief coming their way, all this will be derailed if piracy is not controlled. <clears throat> because piracy means that the ransom that they gather, they then use to bribe officials, buy out parliamentarians, control administration, and use the proceeds of crime to get administration under their control. Now, if this happens again, all these positive economic things will stop this is what troubles me. <coughs> there are efforts to include Somalia in the economic processes of Africa. So besides EGAD, which is essentially a geopolitical organization, they are a part of COMESA, which is the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa. They are a part now as the eighth country admitted two months ago into the East African community which will give them trade access. And under the Africa continental FTA, they can actually start trading with other countries. But to do this, you must have your own production, your own manufacturing, your own services. Now, if you divert yourself into lucrative piracy rather than build economic institutions, then you'll again become a rogue state. So it is very important to have Somali authority from Mogadishu asserted over Puntland and Jubaland with a gentle touch, not with a hammer. Because all the clans people of Somalia are very autonomous in their thinking. They don't mind working together with you for economic benefit, but they don't want to concede authority so easily. So I think what Somaliland has done basically improve its economy and consequently its governance is what the rest of Somalia needs to do. And if piracy is not curtailed, we are going to have serious problems. But the problem with India's friends in the region is that they are working in silos. They are at the moment handling the Houthis because it is the geostrategic requirement. But they are not looking at the path. That is why you see everywhere India Indian Navy is in the forefront. An analyst based in Nairobi who deals with Somalia told me that we are so impressed with India that they are the only country taking resolute action and trying to curb piracy. Today, the pirates are scared of the Indian Navy. So on that, I once again praise the Indian Navy for its wonderful action. And the fact that they were always in the region is now visible because they are acting against People who are not only against India, but against the global economic situation, which Africa, India and the globe cannot afford a further disruption. I'm going to stop there and take questions if they are. Thank you. So, yeah, before we take questions from others, I have a question, sir. You have said that this is the same thing. It has roots in their socio-economic structure, socio-political economic structure of Somalia with Somaliland, Puntland, uh, you know, Somalia, Maine and uh, Juba. And because it's bigger, 
पायरेसी इज द इजी ऑप्शन सो इट्स एक्चुअली ये क्या है कि एक सेल्फ फीडिंग सिस्टम हो गया और मेरे हिसाब से ये सेल्फ फीडिंग सिस्टम बिगड़ता जाएगा क्योंकि सबका नजर जो है वो इसराइल और गाजा के ऊपर है और हुती इसके ऊपर है किसी को फिक्र नहीं है कि इसके बारे में करना क्या है और ये मेरे ख्याल में ये इस इसमें ये जब तक हम पायरेसी के ऊपर काबू नहीं करेंगे बिल्कुल वहां कुछ होगा नहीं ये बात तो आपका सही है कि इंडिया का रोल और इंडियन नेवी का रोल इन करबिंग पायरेसी इज वेरी हाई इसमें दो राय नहीं है पर मेरा सवाल ये है कि आप देखिए आपने ये भी बोला और ये बात सही है कि चाइना का ट्रॉलर आके इस इलाके में मच्छी पकड़ते हैं और कुछ हद तक ये पायरेट्स उन, उन ट्रॉलर्स के ऊपर भी शिकार करते हैं उनको भी पकड़ लेते हैं राइट और उसके लेके फिर वो मदरशिप को पकड़ते हैं फिर उस मदरशिप से ऑपरेट करके बाकी का, काम करते हैं ये तो इस हालत में पीएलए जो वहां डिप्लॉय हुआ है और जो वहां इसीलिए तैनात है जिबूती में एक बेस बना के ताकि एंटी पायरेसी ऑपरेशन करे वो क्यों नहीं कर रहा है ये काम ओके सो एट द मोमेंट द पायरेट्स आर अ स्मॉल इंडस्ट्री सो दे नो दैट द चाइनीज ट्रॉलर्स आर टेकिंग देयर फिश बट ऑल रिपोर्टेड अटैक्स आर ऑन इंडिपेंडेंट ट्रॉलर्स नॉट ऑन चाइनीज ओके एंड द टू बिग शिप्स दैट दे टारगेटेड वन वाज बांग्लादेशी वन वाज बल्गेरिया unlikely to attack you know obtain retaliation unless the indians stepped in so i think whoever is guiding the pirates is studying this system now if they were to attack chinese trawlers then the chinese coast guard or the chinese ships out of djibouti would have to take action that provocation has not happened yet but the chinese don't appear to be playing the benign role that india is playing to protect shipping in that area it is not as if chinese ships don't pass that area so why they are not playing is there a lack of deployment lack of will i don't have clear answers to that question we have to follow that so please remember yeah. even last time around the chinese were among the last to come but they mainly came to test their resilience and their supply lines and to establish a presence that was yeah. the result no i agree with you completely sir uh, the fact is that ye ye bhi report aa rahe hain ki the houthis are not going to you know target russian and chinese ships ye to news reports hain is there a case where china has probably bought off this houthis and probably even bought off these pirates ki bhai aap hame chhod ye kar lo ye bhi ye this is up, completely up china's uh, you know anti i mean allies so and they the might houthis have are, the houthis are backed by iran so if the chinese tell iran the houthis will not target china they will not do not... yeah but uh, yes chinese back channel to prevent attack on its trawlers through a carrot and stick policy even by advance payments cannot be ruled out cannot be ruled out okay so the way you are putting all this across uh, ye to lagta hai ki indian navy ka deployment wahan kafi der tak chalta rahega and there is no other navy which is going to come and help indian navy out or be in tandem with indian navy ki wahan ja ke uh, in pirates anti piracy operations kare agar anti piracy operations nahi hua to international shipping ke upar asar to zarur padega isme do rai nahi hai to is halat mein uh, is there a need ki india ko कि ओके यू हैव गॉन वहां आपने एंटी पायरेसी ऑपरेशन वगैरह शुरू कर दिया है कि कैन वी नाउ स्टार्ट हेल्पिंग एरिट्रिया इथोपिया सोमालिया सोमालिया केनिया एंड ऑल दिस कंट्रीज टू गेट आउट ऑफ दिस पायरेसी चक्कर इन इज देयर समवेयर वी कैन स्टार्ट डूइंग दैट बिकॉज अभी के लिए तो द वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज एंड ऑल दोज अदर प्लेयर्स आर मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन You know, up north in the Arabian Peninsula and Israel and Gaza and Lebanon, or wahan fasse pade hain. 
बट अगर यहाँ प्रॉब्लम नहीं सॉर्ट आउट नहीं हुआ तो प्रॉब्लम तो हमारे ऊपर भी आके गिर सकता है तो इसके बारे में आपका क्या राय है I think Indian Navy has had strong relationship with the Southern Indian Ocean, with the Seychelles, with the Mauritius, with Comoros and Madagascar, and now the Agalega uh, facility has been inaugurated formally. With Mozambique, we have with Tanzania, we have a growing relationship, and now with Kenya, when their president came to India a few months ago, there is actually a yeah. joint statement on maritime security. so there is a progress over there with somalia because of the lack of real authority i don't think we have taken up uh, much yet but recently with ethiopia there is again a further effort to expand defense cooperation provide defense supplies uh, with eritrea they don't borrow they don't take a line of credit that is more restrictive but certainly kenya tanzania ethiopia there is a revival of defense cooperation particularly for focusing on maritime security so i think their facilities would be available to us but none of them have the capacity to deal with these pirates on the sea this we noticed even when in cabo delgado in mozambique there was an insurgency mozambique did not have a coastal capacity to attack them from the sea even south african capacity was very limited it was ethically indian than the french navy who were operating trying to close the sea route to supply the rebels in the cabo delgado who were ultimately put down by rwandan forces so i see india diplomatically increasing its heft but for the foreseeable future i think the constant vigil that indian navy are that i don't think the deployment of indian navy are new to my mind they have always been there patrolling like there in the south china sea it's just that when something happens like in south china sea very often indian navy comes to notice because of a volcano or a tsunami and they are almost the first to reach why they the first because they are already around or okay yes, sir the indian navy is around and now they are acting that i think the resolute action without ducking responsibility i must say very positive action this shows yeah. india as a responsible part and it shows that we take the fact that the coast of eastern southern africa that indian ocean is part of our indo pacific policy is a serious contention yeah i think you made very important point sir i'll get back to this map aur main sabko batana chahta hu जो हमारा एम्बेसडर साहब बोल रहे हैं आप देखिए जहां एंटी पायरेसी ऑपरेशन लिखा है तो आप पूरा नेवी वहां से लेकर नीचे अगलीगढ़ तक अभी वी आर हमारा प्रेजेंस है उसके बाद मिनिकॉय में भी हमारा एक बेस बन रहा है पोर्ट ब्लेयर तो स्ट्रेंथन हो ही रहा है अगर आप देखेंगे तो पूरा इंडियन ओशन के ऊपर हमारा रीच है राइट और मेरे ख्याल में इस इलाके में आज के दिन एक मात्र नेवी है इंडियन नेवी और इंडियन फोर्सेस मैं ये नेवी ही की बात नहीं कर रहा हूँ एयरफोर्स ने भी काम किया ये जो एमवी रूएन के ऊपर जो अटैक हुआ था उसको वार्ड ऑफ करने के लिए और यू नो इट वाज अ कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ऑपरेशन सो एकमात्र नेवी है और एकमात्र आर्म फोर्सेस है जहाँ हम यहाँ चाहे हुए हैं तो सर इफ दिस इज द केस वॉट डज इट डू फॉर आवर overall uh, you know grip on this area i mean i think that our power projection is very real and i mean now it is not only uh, uh, showing the flag you are actually playing a useful role in uh, role. in uh, keeping uh, global shipping safe when we talk of a free and open indo pacific i think this is real resolute action by india to keep the indo pacific free and open because as i explained to us the indian ocean is part of the indo pacific india japan and france all include this area in the indo pacific policy the us and australia don't so therefore i think we are playing yeah, a very I, good yes yeah i think we are playing a, a tremendous role and i would like to explain to everyone you see when 
द नेवीज ऑपरेट इन दिस मैनर खास करके कोई भी नेवी and you have now reach from one end of the indian ocean to the other end of the indian ocean like what are uh, you know our uh, uh, maritime interest was defined by our first was defined by our uh, prime minister uh, then prime minister mr manmohan singh who said uh, india's interest come from gulf of aden to the strait of malacca and today you are controlling <laughs> that entire area yes and you are not only controlling the thing or dream or rather or vision or our ambition what jo bhi boliye aap of being net security provider in this area is coming true now right main isme aapko batana chahta hu aap dekhiye pla kisi tarike se bhi yahan kaam nahi kar raha hai aur ye bhi main batana chahta hu farak kya hai inko deploy kis liye kiya gaya tha jaise ambassador sahab ne bataya tha pla ko yahan isliye deploy kiya gaya tha upar ऊपरी तौर पर कि एंटी पेरिसी ऑपरेशन के लिए बट अगर आप चाइनीज लेक को पढ़ेंगे तो यहाँ ये पता चलता है कि जीचिन पिंग साहब इनका नेवी को इधर इसीलिए भेजा है ताकि उनको एक्सपीरियंस मिले वॉर एक्सपीरियंस मिले डिप्लॉयमेंट एक्सपीरियंस मिले उनको लॉजिस्टिक्स एक्सपीरियंस मिले वो तो हो नहीं रहा क्योंकि वो अंदर जिबूती में बैठे हैं तो ये एक विचित्र सा स्थिति हो गया है जो हमारा नेवी छोटा है पर फैला हुआ है और अपना काम कर रहा है और ये जो बड़ा नेवी है सबसे दुनिया में सबसे बड़ा नेवी है और वो है जिबूती में बैठा है और वो साउथ चाइना सी से बाहर निकल के नहीं आ रहा है तो इसी से आपको हमें पता चलता है कि फर्क क्या है फर्क और बात ये है कि जो भी आप, आपने सुना है एम्बेसडर साहब ने किस तरीके से अच्छी तरीके से बताया कि वहां का प्रॉब्लम क्या है और वो हट उसमें हल निकलने वाला नहीं है तो ये जो एंटी पैरिसी ऑपरेशन चलता रहेगा इनफैक्ट वो बढ़ते जा रहे हैं तो आवर स्टैंडिंग इन द इंटरनेशनल कम्युनिटी इज गोइंग अप ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट है दूसरी बात ये है कि द सेकेंड पॉइंट विच इज विच ही हिमसेल्फ सेट जो मैं हाईलाइट करना चाहता हूँ कि इंडिया फ्रांस और जापान ये तीनों देश इस इलाके को पार्ट ऑफ इंडो पैसेफिक मानते हैं और ये काम करते करते इंडिया और फ्रांस का कोऑपरेशन बढ़ रहा है वैसे भी हमारा स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनर है फ्रांस राइट जापान भी एक स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनर है तो एक नया पार्टनरशिप बन के आ रहा है जहां इंडिया का जो स्तर है अंतर्राष्ट्रीय इसमें बढ़ रहा है और इससे बाकी नेवीज को भी पता चल रहा है कि इंडिया इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेस जो हैं उनसे मुकाबला करना उतना आसान नहीं है सो आई पुट इट बैक इन टू अंटेक्स बिकॉज वॉट यूर सेड हेयर इट माइट बी समथिंग वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ यू नो पायरेसी बट आई एम टॉकिंग ऑफ द मैरी टाइम सिक्योरिटी पार्ट ऑफ इट टू सुनामी जब हुआ था तो बाकी सब नेवी बैठ गए सिर्फ इस इलाके में दो ही नेवी काम कर रहे थे वो है इंडियन नेवी और दूसरा यूएस नेवी बाकी सब बैठ गए और ये जो पीएलए का नेवी तो बिल्कुल अपने बाहर निकला नहीं अभी भी वही हालत नजर आ रहा है आप देखिए यूके नेवी और यूएस नेवी जो है रेड सी में वो एंटी हाउथी ऑपरेशन कर रहे हैं और बिल्कुल पूरा पैरसी का ऑपरेशन हमारे ऊपर दामोदर बैठा है पर हम अच्छे तरीके से कर रहे हैं तो so, हमें समझने की जरूरत है कि भारत का स्तर दिन भर दिन बढ़ता जा रहा है और हमारा अगर इकोनॉमी में जिस उसी तरीके से बढ़ेगा तो सब कुछ ठीक होता जाएगा सर इज वुड यू लाइक टू ऐड एनीथिंग टू व्हाट आई सेड बिकॉज जितने भी एंटी पैरेसी ऑपरेशन के बारे में आपने बताया है वो इट हैज स्पिल ओवर इफेक्ट ऑन अदर एस्पेक्ट ऑफ मेरेटाइम सिक्योरिटी एंड द इंडियन ओशन रीजन एंड consequently the global standing of india so would you like to add something i'll be grateful yes two things first when you have you have very correctly explained about maritime security so maritime security it has to largely deal with what are called non traditional threats not open war but non traditional non traditional threats are humanitarian assistance and disaster relief that indian navy has been providing to this coast right through The, the period because they have many cyclones during the covid we were providing food aid all through this region the second part is counter terrorism 
Now that also we are working with them. As I said, Cabo Delgado, we did work from the sea to prevent terrorism and insurgency in Cabo Delgado, where we have got very strong commercial interests. Third aspect is money laundering, drug running, and uh, human trafficking. Now, this is what is called the Southern Corridor, which comes into Mombasa and Kenya. So, Indian Navy is always working with others to curtail this aspect. And the United Nations uh, uh, agency which deals with drugs is always grateful to the Indian Navy because we have to disrupt the trafficking from Myanmar and Afghanistan, which comes through these seas that you have thrown on the map. And the fourth one of the aspect of this is illegal fishing, IUU. They are also now, by if you interdict piracy and others, but we are not taking action against trawlers fishing in the EEZ of coastal countries. That we don't have the authority. So that part remains a problem. But this anti-piracy operation is also a part of the non-traditional threats. Now, second part I want to mention to you that yes, we have got strategic partnership with Japan, France, US, and therefore we can use their bases for logistics and other reasons in this region. But what I notice in these current anti-piracy operations is that we are basing our supply chain and logistics entirely out of Indian bases. Even the commandos who landed on the MP Ruin were actually flown several thousand kilometers from yeah, Indian yeah. bases. India, India. In Agalega or Seychelles or Djibouti and then transfer them. No. So I think this has been a very good force projection from our side. Very good force projection to show that we are capable of implementing our goals strategically based out of India. And once you have Miniqua and Agalega, which are yours and not somebody else's, you will have much more space in this region. So India will be the leading net security provider in the Western and Southern Indian Ocean. That I think is a clear message going on. Yes, sir. I, I have no doubt about it. I just want to add one more thing. Besides uh, all non-traditional threats, we've also dealt with one traditional threat in Maldives way back yes. when they yes. wanted to have a coup and take over the island and all that. And so we have our presence and strength and all that. And I would also like to, maybe I want to tell you, all people understand that the naval power means that we have as many as we have Pandubia or SSBNs or we have frigates, we can fire and fight and all that. It doesn't happen like that. Okay? This is a power projection of the game. Okay? और जितना वो हार्ड पावर ऑफ नेवी है वो पावर प्रोजेक्शन को असिस्ट करता है तो दैट इज वन थिंग व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेकंड थिंग ये पूरा ये इसमें क्या है हमारे जो नेवी को एक्सपीरियंस मिल रहा है जॉइंट ऑपरेशंस में हमें एक्सपीरियंस मिल रहा है जो जैसे हमारे एंबेसडर साहब ने बताया है कि ये जो ऑपरेशन एमवी रूएन के साथ हुआ है वो हुआ था जहां हमने एक सी17 को इंडिया से भेजा और एयरड्रॉप करके कमांडोस को वो पायरेट्स को ओवर पावर करके उनको पकड़ लिया जैसे हमारे मार्कोस गए वो हाथ कड़ा कर दिया उन्होंने बताना तो आसान है ये सब बट करना मुश्किल है और कितना मुश्किल है इसके बारे में मेरे को कल एस्टरडे चीफ ऑफ डिफेंस स्टाफ ने बताया कि इट वाज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ऑपरेशंस क्योंकि हमने आज तक ऐसे कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ऑपरेशन किया नहीं और इससे क्या है कि हमारा जॉइंट फोर्स प्रोजेक्शन कैपेबिलिटी बढ़ रहा है एंड दिस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग हो सकता है एक छोटा से नाव को बचाया पर आप सोचिए एक आप 2000 किलोमीटर दूर तट से दूर आप जाके अपना एयर पावर के जरिए और आपका कमांडो पावर के जरिए आप हावी हो रहे हो किसी के ऊपर और उस इलाके को सैनिटाइज कर रहे हो so these are very complicated operations which we are getting experience or agar hum sochte hain ki ye ab you know just to give you a comparison what is pla doing it is not doing anything uske paas might hai bahut taakat hai par us taakat ko istemal nahi kar raha hai 
और इस्तेमाल करने के मूड में नहीं है अगर इस्तेमाल करने के मूड में नहीं है तो ये आप लेके रहिए कि दे के नॉट कम और इस इलाके में हावी हो सकते हैं राइट दिस इज वॉट इंडिया इज स्लोली प्रोग्रेसिंग टू सर आई फिनिश वॉट वी वॉन्टेड टू पुट अक्रॉस आई थिंक यू गिवन अ ट्रमेंडस यू नो एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ द फैक्टर्स बिहाइंड पैरेसी द पॉलिटिक्स बिहाइंड पैरेसी और इसका इस इलाके के जियो पॉलिटिक्स खास करके हॉर्न ऑफ अफ्रीका के बारे में आपने अच्छी तरीके से बताया मैं सब जितने भी ये प्रोग्राम देख रहे हैं मैं आपको यकीन बता सकता हूं इससे बढ़िया एक्सप्लेनेशन आपको और कहीं नहीं मिलेगा अगर आप जानना चाहते हो एंटी पैरेसी ऑपरेशन के बारे में आपके दोस्तों को ये दीजिए और इसके बारे में दोबारा जो एम्बेसडर साहब ने पहले बताया पूरा सोमालिया के बारे में एरिट्रिया के बारे में केन्या के बारे में इथियोपिया के बारे में जिबूती के बारे में दोबारा देखिए जब तक इसके पॉलिटिक्स को आप समझेंगे नहीं ये एंटी पायरेसी ऑपरेशन को भी हम समझेंगे नहीं सर आई फिनिश इफ यू हैव एनीथिंग टू से फाइन अदरवाइज आई लास्ट क्वेश्चन आई टेक थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू यस